Hello and welcome to another episode of Katie the Science Lady. I'm Mrs. Jacobson and today's topic is taxonomy. So let's learn together. Okay, let's have our little chat here about taxonomy. So taxonomy is the branch of biology that deals with grouping and naming organisms. And that might sound kind of weird because it sounds like it's like the study of taxes, um, but it's not. When we group things in biology, we call that creating a taxa or taxon. Um, so that's where the name comes from. But why would we want to group and name organisms? This started hundreds, if not thousands of years ago, because we wanted to try and understand the world around us. That's something we still keep doing. So that was the original idea behind creating um, taxons of animals. It also now lets us make connections and classify animals based on their characteristics and based on their genetic um, similarities and differences. Back in the day, we used to kind of classify them based on somewhat arbitrary things, based on what we just could see. So we might group them into categories like things that fly, things that crawl, things that walk on four legs, or things that may have toxins or poisons. These were things that people could either see um, or observe very easily, so we used to classify them based on this. Nowadays, we classify them more based on um, their genetics, their, really, their shared characteristics, um, to make it a little bit more specific, and this is changing all the time. So yeah, organisms do get class reclassified in different groups, orders, things like that, um, a lot, because we're learning more and more every day. All right, going back in time here. This is a picture of Carolus Linnaeus. He was one of the first people that decided to create a system for this naming. Um, he was a Swedish botanist, and he just kind of designated the seven-level classification system. And those levels, again, are called taxa or taxons. And it's another word for level. So anytime you see taxa, just think levels, um, and it's the same thing. His levels were based on similarities between organisms, which makes sense to us, um, even if it just was things that fly or things that crawl or things that swim. It was whatever was easily observed at the time. Again, a level is one taxon, so just kind of keep that in mind. When I use that word, I mean level of organization. We now have eight taxons, so we've kind of added an additional one, and the top one is domain. It is the most broad taxon that we have. Um, it contains millions of organisms. There's only a couple of the things at the top here, so there's only two domains, um, or sometimes three. It depends on who you talk to, really. But there's only a couple of domains, and as we move down this list, we're going to get more specific to an organism, but we're going to get a larger number of organisms. Kingdom, we have six kingdoms. Um, we'll talk about those in another video. So if you need to see my kingdoms that are um, prokaryotic, you can take a click here. If you need to see the kingdoms that are eukaryotic, you can take a click here, <laughs> somewhere on the screen. Um, but I'll go through all six of those kingdoms in a little bit more detail. I've split them into prokaryotic kingdoms, bacterial kingdoms, and eukaryotic kingdoms, which are non-bacterial organisms, just to kind of give us a little bit of separation and make it a little bit easier for that information to get um, kind of integrated in your head. After all that, we have a phylum. We have classes, orders, families, genuses, and finally, the most specific species. It's the most specific because you have the fewest organisms in it. Um, for example, humans, we have just one species of human. Every person on the planet is a homo sapiens or just human. Um, we don't have us plus monkeys plus a bunch of other things in our species. It's just us. So here's an example. In the kingdom Animalia, that's the animal kingdom, we could have any one of all of these different things here. Black bears, grizzly bears, birds, snakes, fish, insects, they're all animals. As you go down in those levels of organization or those taxa, you're going to get more specific. So this phylum here is chordata, and that means any animal that has a spinal cord um, or a nerve cord. So this would include fish, snake, bird, pig, dog, panda, black bear, grizzly bear. Insects are not in the phylum chordata. After that, we're going down to the class mammalia. Um, this includes all mammals. There's a lot of characteristics for mammals, but some of the characteristics include that they have hair, um, that they have live young, and that they nurse their young, so they have milk for their young. And all of these animals here fall into that category. After that, we go to order carnivora. These include um, animals that are mammals that um, eat meat. 
So a pig does not eat meat unless it's really prompted. Um, usually pigs are going to be herbivores. So that would be a crazy circumstance. But dogs, pandas, black bears, and grizzly bears all can eat meat. Um, and it's something they'll do naturally. After that family, Ursidae, that's the bear family. Um, pandas are in the bear family technically. Even though they're not super closely related to bears, they're still in that family. We have the black bear and the grizzly bear there as well. Getting more specific, going to the genus Ursus. Again, it's a more specific bear family. We have the black bear and the grizzly bear. They're very closely related, so this makes sense. After that, we get to the species. It's called Horribilis, and that is the grizzly bear. So it's really, really specific. The grizzly bear has a specific name um, that all scientists across the world know about it. I'm going to talk about it in my binomial nomenclature video, but just to give you a brief idea, the grizzly bear has two names. The second name is its species name. That's the most specific that tells you exactly what it is. The first name it has is the genus. So the name has two parts because it's going to help you narrow it down to the specific species. Ursus horribilis would be a grizzly bear. Um, and that's going to tell you a lot about it, including some of its characteristics. And again, the point is so that all scientists across the world can talk about the exact same species without speaking the same language. Kind of helpful. So my way to remember all of these levels of organization is kind of silly. I know you can see it already. Um, but you do need to know the order that these come in so that it makes most sense when you're kind of organizing these animals. We go from kingdom to phylum, class, order family, genus, and species. That's not the easiest thing to just memorize off the top of your head. So I've created a mnemonic device for you. I did not come up with this, but it's one that I've used for years. And I tell it to my students every single year that I teach this. Um, it sticks in my head and I know it sticks in their head. So I always start with domain, which is dumb. Kingdom is kids. Phylum is uh, playing. Class is catch. Order is on. Family is freeways. Genus is get and species is smashed. So if you put it all together, you get dumb kids playing catch on freeways get smashed. Not the most polite thing to say, but it's kind of true. Uh, it's a good life lesson. Don't play catch on freeways. Um, and it also just has every single one of those letters in order. I've seen my students write this down on a test before. As soon as I tell them to start, they'll write this down um, because it helps them remember the order and it helps them get more specific. Then they can remember that genus and species at the end um, are, are going to be that binomial nomenclature name because they're the most specific parts. We can also use these taxa to see our closely related organisms. We know that if they're all in the same kingdom, that's one level of organization they share. But as they start to drift apart, they're going to become more and more separate from each other. So if they don't have the same phylum, they're not as closely related as members of the same phylum. So if we get to phylum here, organism one is in a different phylum than two, three, and four. This means it's not as closely related to these three as they are to each other. So two, three, and four are most closely related to each other here. Then if we go down one more row, again, we're just looking at two, three, and four because they're most closely related because organism one has been kind of pushed to the side. It's different. Organism two and three share the same class. Organism four does not. So again, two and three are most closely related uh, so far. From there, we can keep looking at the bottom and we say, okay, well, they have different orders, but they have the same class. So we can say here that organism two and three are the most closely related. We know they all have different families. We can see that here. And they all have different orders. So those two categories wouldn't help us out at all. But when we look at class, these are the only two that share a class, phylum, and kingdom. That shows us that they're the most closely related out of this group. Let's try one more. I'm going to go ahead and pause for a second. I'm going to let you look at this, get your ideas in your head, and then as I go through it, then you can check your answer. All right, I'm going to give you about 10 seconds. Ready? Go. Okay, I know it wasn't quite 10 seconds, but it feels like a long time. Now I threw in something extra here, a common name. We have orange barred sulfur, orange banded protea, silver spotted flambeau, and silver studded blue. Common names don't mean anything scientifically. They're just what a random person might decide to call them. Um, sometimes different organisms have many different common names and they can be really confusing. And I'll talk about that in our next video on binomial nomenclature. 
So we can ignore that column for now. Um, and you can pretty much always ignore it. So now let's start looking at class. They're all the same, so they're all closely related in that way. Excellent, let's move down to order. Again, they're all the same, so we can move down and get more specific. Once we get down here, we have Paraday, Lyceanidae, Nymphalidae, and Lyceanidae again. So two and four have the same family. This means they're the most closely related out of these four different types of butterflies. We can check this when we look back in the genus. They all have different gena, genuses or genii, um, so that doesn't help us at all. So the family level is where they're most closely related, and two and four share everything from the family level and above. So we know they have to be the most closely related. All right, let's recap taxonomy. It is the branch of biology that's all about grouping and naming organisms, and we do this because we want to understand the world around us. Nowadays, we use genetic similarities to help us group these animals and organisms. We divide all these organisms into groups called taxa, and they're based on how specifically related these organisms are to each other. There are several different levels, starting with the most broad, which is domain, going down into kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and the most specific species containing just one type of organism. Now that can be a lot of things to remember, but it is important that we know what order they come in. And to do this, I have a handy dandy mnemonic device that may help you out. Most teachers will teach um, King Philip came over for good spaghetti or grape soda or whatever food item you want to put in there. Uh, but I use one that's a little more obvious to me. It kind of stands out in my head. It's something I won't ever forget, something I can't forget. Um, and I had it taught to me by a mentor teacher a couple years ago, Mr. Quinn, shout out to you in Arizona. Uh, but here's how it goes. Dumb kids, domain kingdom, playing catch, phylum class, on freeways, order family, get smashed, genus species. So that whole sentence is dumb kids playing catch on freeways get smashed. I cannot forget that. I tell it to my students every year and they don't forget it. Um, so hopefully that works for you, but that helps you remember from domain all the way down to species, the most specific. That's it for today. I hope you guys had fun and I hope you found something interesting. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more biology content. And as always, I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something and I'll see you later.